Welcome to Builds with Blocks, a show centered around the micro action figures and brick based construction sets of the Halo universe. However, today we're taking a step back to look at more than just Mega. I'm your host, Colin Perkins. I'm joined by Tom Fishenden. Yo. Gabe Clem. Hey, guys. And John Friend. Hello. John is the head of Xbox. Uh, well, so you have to give me your title because I may have gotten it wrong. So the head of Halo, um, our merchandise Which, at Halo? Halo comes first. So head of Halo and Xbox consumer products. Perfect. Okay. There we go. Um, so he's uh, graciously um, agreed to join us on a chat to just kind of dig in and talk about what he's been up to. You know, we're all excited about the Halo Infinite release. Um, our show, obviously, we do you know mega constructs and that's a big portion of this of of you know the merchandise and whatnot for halo john's john is gonna oversees everything so not only the mega constructs but all the other stuff the you know the the t-shirts and the the um the collectibles all that sort of stuff so we're excited to to dig in on that today um but first before we dig into some of the questions i did want to go around the horn you know normally we talk about our mega constructs but i do want to go about and talk about the last piece of halo gear you bought um what was the last thing that you picked up gig Okay, what's the last thing you picked up that, that was non-Mega? Non-Mega Constructs Halo merchandise. Um, it was either the Halo Infinite controller stand, the little Master Chief with a rocket on his back at Target, or before that, it was probably <coughs> the... Um, I got the SSD for the Xbox with the Master Chief print on Sweet. it. And, I've, and I even got I even got the little Master Chief oh, phone okay, case. Oh, look at this! Okay. So, I'm rocking. Very awesome. nice. Yeah, like yeah, John's yep. John's happy about that. Uh, hey, oh, there, <laughs> there we go. Sam, how about you? Well, as if the matching T-shirts weren't enough. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, yes. <laughs> um, go on. <laughs> I was gonna say I have to say there was a little bit of internal controversy about like, can we actually do this? Is this the right thing to do for Chief? Would he actually hold a controller or your phone? But it's it's one of my favorite products. I just love it. Yeah, it's so useful as yeah, well. Just it off to yes. the side of you. Somebody's um, got to make a scaled uh, a scaled controller that Chief like would actually <gasps> would like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like this giant controller. How amazing is that? Be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might have to think about that. <laughs> I have some ideas. I love it. Cool. So the last thing I bought um, was the Mangler. And um, I, it's in my closet still. I haven't broken it out, but um, say, it's a beautiful piece. I watched a review on somewhere online, and they uh, they gave high praise to that. So I went with that one and excited to bust it out eventually and play it with my boys. So John, how about you? What, what's the last thing you bought? <laughs> oh, oh very nice. nice. Is that the camera you... bag? Uh, no, this is the backpack. So there's, this is the, the smaller backpack. of the backpacks. Yeah. I'll see, I don't know how this is going to show up on screen, um, but you'll notice the, uh, you, you'll oh, that's the inside. Yeah. I have looked longingly at that online before. <laughs> it's actually, it's really nice, I got to say, and there's some, you know, subtle touches on here. I'm trying to look for, we got the, uh, of course, the 117 yes. on the back. Perfect. Um, nice. I mean, I'm obviously in an incredibly lucky position, which I'm really grateful for, where I get to see and touch and take a lot of these things home. Yeah. But I also, I make it a point, like there's, if it's something that, that I would use, then I make a point of buying them directly because yeah, I want to have you. the full consumer experience. And actually, even sometimes like with our new gear shop, I want to see how I get the receipt. I want to see how it shows up in the package. Yeah. Is it damaged? Like, does the package feel special at all? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I like I back ordered the ba a couple of the bags from, from Hex and I love it because I'm starting to go into the office at least once or twice a week now okay. um and the thing's fantastic and it's yeah. like and it's awesome. also cracks me up because you, you go out in the world and people people it's a subtle bag but people get it immediately <laughs> yeah like, oh yeah. halo yep yeah see i like that subtleness too because there are there are some pieces from halo that are like in your face right that's like all over the place <laughs> yeah. chief master chief you know <laughs> And some people aren't ready for that, right? Some people want to just go subtle. I'm more of a like, like ease well, them in touch. softly. <laughs> right, exactly. So, oh, except for my HVAC shirt. That, I was going to say that Rockman <laughs> shirt, that shirt. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, all right, so let's dive into a little bit about your history with Halo itself. We usually start with a little Halo, um, and then you know we then we talk Mega Constructs, but I think we'll just talk about yep. just Halo gear and your history with Microsoft. So, um, when did you start playing Halo, or did you start playing Halo before you joined uh, 343? I did actually. I started with CE. Um, oh, nice. Of all the weird things, I won a uh, I won a fantasy football pool with some of my buddies. Yeah. And so, so just had some money that I hadn't budgeted for, and used that to buy the Xbox when it first launched. Okay. And so, if you were there at the beginning, like, what game were you going to play? I mean, I'd be lying if I said, like, I pl- I had some plan master plan here um but so i was there at the beginning um and then i mean it's funny the truth of the matter is like i look back it's it's all it's it's different when you're working on it sure yeah Um, totally get it Mm -hmm. so now so now like for me ce just holds a special place because that's Mm -hmm. the one where you got to see the sort of the you got to see the sky and that view Mm-hmm. and that that expansive world right and and i never imagined at that point in time that video games was even a thing i could work in yeah uh-huh. so like so anyway so that one holds a special place in my heart so you started um so when did you start at 343 then so you have the history with halo you play that Ooh. you get experience that like the rest of us you know what what kind of got you into in the door there i've been seven a little bit more than seven years at 343 so i okay. joined um, nice. I worked at Cartoon Network once upon a time. Yeah. Uh, helped build up the consumer products business there. Decided I really wanted to be in video games because that was the funny because I was working in cartoons. I'm like, video games are the future. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and ended up uh, getting a chance to work, sort of combine my background plus my interest and worked at Lucasfilm for a little while. Oh, yeah. Um, Ooh, wow. Oh, and, nice. My literally my first day on the job there, my boss comes in and is like, "Hey, there's some people from Microsoft here. Um, maybe you should take this project." And so I ended up, you know, I got to know people at Xbox um, okay. that may or may not have turned into a uh, a Connect game, which we probably shouldn't discuss today. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, yes. but I, I held on my Connect for a long time. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I got to know I didn't find a buyer. Xbox. I just found a new yeah. home. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another a few years later, and I ended up moving up to the Seattle area and working at Xbox and um, inside Xbox. I actually didn't start at 343. I was working on, uh, I was looking at, like, what are new uh, game types and, and, like, non-traditional businesses we could get in. Yeah. I actually worked on Xbox Fitness for a while, which is fascinating to learn, like, an entirely radically new business. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I bumped into the Halo team and we just shared so much in common. And I, I've always loved just like, I've loved the universe as much, like universes. I've been a yeah. sci-fi fantasy nerd since I could read and mm-hmm. uh, or watch or whatever. And so I got to know that team and it was again, just sort of, you know, mutual attraction, moved over to 343 and now I've been there, I guess, more than seven years. I'm trying to ooh, put yeah, years on right. it. Right, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm dating myself here. <laughs> well, it's good. You're you're a vet. I like that. <laughs> um, so I, I, I have a couple ways I could go. I do want to know your favorite Halo game. Like, do you have I was a just favorite? About to ask. You know, CE. It's hard. It's hard to say no to your your first, right? Yep. Um, has, has anything else surpassed that for you? You know, it's funny. They, I like the. I like them all, but I'm I'm kind of jaundiced now. Jaundice might be the right, wrong word. Jaded. Sorry, jaundiced. There we go. I'm not I'm not <laughs> turning to yellow. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking a little red. I look at my webcam and it makes me stressed out. I'm like, oh my God, I look like a lobster. Um, you know, so for me, actually, Halo is about the memories more than anything. And yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, through this weird pandemic year, uh, some of my kids ended up spending a good chunk of time at home with us. And uh, I played Reach with my oldest son. So oh, yeah. if you ask me today, actually Reach is my favorite just cause like that was actually sitting side by side, literally on the couch as you do, mm-hmm. playing the game. Yeah, that's just right. awesome. Co-op. Yep, that that sounds amazing. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point is, um, 
You know, it's it really is the experience. If you can have that couch co-op experience, so there's so many people that have gone back, right? And just like I know Tom's yeah. right right now, he's going back and playing yeah. with a buddy of his, slowly replaying all of them. Yeah, um, exactly. And so just having that experience, enjoying the Halo universe that you talked about, is just. I mean, one of the reasons that ropes us all in is this extended universe, this this place that we all just enjoy yep. losing ourselves in, right? Yeah, that's cool. Um. All right. What else do you do? You guys have anything else that you want to ask real quick before we dive into kind of the Halo gear questions? Tom, do you have anything? I'm eager to dive in, Gabe. If you've got anything, feel free to chime in. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to talk more. You you telling me about you know playing with your kids on Halo Reach? It reminded me of because that's the same reason that that Halo Three is my favorite game is because the Christmas that it came out, my brother got the like the limited edition 360 for Christmas. And he and mm. I sat on my parents' couch for like four hours that day playing the campaign together. And that's, that's been my favorite Halo game since the day it released when I was yep. like eight years old. That's cool. Yeah, lots of good memories. You know, it's just, it's a great universe to explore. And we're, we're so yeah. happy that that continues on, right? You know, we're yep. all... You know, we're all rooting for you guys because we all love this, you know, this, this universe that you've created for mm. us, so... Um, why don't you talk about a little bit before we go into, um, I guess, specifics of the gear. I think a lot of us are curious about, you know, I guess just your role at 343. We talked about kind of how you found the role, but like, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, as, as you're, you live in this merchandise world for Halo? Um, so, like, broadly speaking, we're responsible for all of the physical products that you can find on web stores or out in traditional retail. And it literally runs the gamut, gamut from socks through um, statues. Yeah. Um, yes. Controllers and like mm -hmm. high-end collectibles. Um, and even, you know, and obviously I got a chance to, to see you all a couple of times, you know, ticketed experiences. So it's sort of this, mm -hmm. this yeah. full suite of things beyond the game. Mm -hmm. Um and so, you know, day to day for me is a combination of, um, you know, getting to think about what's the long term roadmap, where do we want to go, do we mm -hmm. have the right capabilities on the team, um, and then diving into specific questions about, uh, and it could be everything from where are fashion trends going, yeah, to yeah. how do we set up the right partnership to damn, like, how did we miss that? Or why are we mm. getting the feedback over here? Or have we thought yeah. about this other thing? So it's, you know, it, I love it because, and no joke, like I've learned more in my career about the sock industry than I ever knew that I would <laughs> want to. <laughs> but it's, you know, everything from, you know, dyeing and where fabric is going to manufacturing techniques to fashion trends to how you structure partnerships to listening to communities and fans mm -hmm. so i just love it because it actually it gets to be a ton of different things yeah um, yeah and it's all fundamentally about how do we actually bring that universe to life which again like i mean i can go back to as a kid you know reading Lord of the Rings movies and like Robert Heinlein books. And yeah, you know, sadly I'm dating myself big time, but all the way through video games and film. Yeah. And I remember going to the first star Wars when I was a kid and yeah, completely freaking me out. Cause my older brother was like, we got to go. And I was afraid of the Tuscan Raiders. And <laughs> <laughs> They're scary. It's kind of all that stuff melted into one. Um, and thankfully we've got an amazing team and also a history of, of doing this too so it's not like it's not like i'm in there doing any of this by myself it's just i get right. a chance to to be a part of it so what is um i mean that's a good overview but what's like the mission you know like so you guys set out to make great you know <clears throat> merchandise for your halo fans or like is, is it more than that or kind of how do you approach your product development um this is good timing because we're in planning season at microsoft so i've actually okay. been uh, oh, working boy. on tr trying to make the mission statements more clear. So I will, I'll preview the latest iteration with you, right. like here for the first time. You just read us um, the slide. Oh right? boy. Here we go. <laughs> I've got, we're working on the slide. Um, so it's uh, earn fans plus make money equals create joy. And so the, the three components there are 
we use the word earn very specifically because it's not like, you know, fans don't magic aren't magically created. We have yeah. to make sure that we're creating a universe that's worthy of admiration, giving people on ramps to get interested, mm -hmm. giving people who are existing fans ways to deepen their deepen their their love, and giving people and Tom, kudos to you, giving people. <laughs> giving people gear so that then they, they can showcase and, and share that love with others. So that's like, that's the earn fans bucket. Yeah. The make money bucket is not like, Hey, we're out there. Like we just got to go make crazy tons of money. Uh, but we operate, we operate in a world where we want to create physical products. Microsoft is not in the business of manufacturing, right? Yeah, or we right. don't manufacture, yeah. we don't manufacture lots of things. So right. we need to, we need to work to create a healthy partner ecosystem yeah. so that we can help get this stuff out there. Like I can't get all this out there. Um, like I would love to just give all this to you. Um, yeah. You can't we, mass market can. the giant controller that we talked yeah. about, right? Yeah. I mean, it, Unless yeah. we have partners <laughs> who are like, Hey, Halo's a big thing. I could manufacture this amazing backpack. So it's, yeah. That second point is we operate it as a business, not because we're trying to, uh, that's not the, that's not the why that's the how. Yeah. Yeah. And the why is actually to create joy. And that, you know, is basically, it's like, I mean, you guys are amazing. I mean, you love this stuff. You live it. You talk about it. Lots of people watch you to learn more about it. Um, you know, and that's ultimately, that's ultimately what we're here for is like, how do mm. we create more joy and expand the universe? And then you look at all the levers we have to do that. We just launched a new book so we can expand stories. Yeah. We yeah. give people gear that they can wear on camera so that they can share their love for the game. Mm -hmm. You know, we can bingo. We can help you yeah. hold your phone. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, you know, so it's like it's all those things. So that's kind of the that's the overall mission. And and our goal is to create uh you know, help create bigger, bigger fan communities create more fans, help fans get deeper into it, and ultimately just, you know, expand on this universe that we love. Yeah, that's awesome. Ooh. What do you guys, um, what I, do you guys I, think of the slide? Is that, I may, I didn't present it to yeah, you. No, I mean. No, that's, no that's uh, not, I think it's, it's great to have that down on, um, I mean, obviously, you know, all businesses have some sort of a mission and drive. I think one thing I was going to follow up on uh, was, because it's, it's the last part of that, is to create joy, right? And it's how is it to see the community in joy? You know, you're, you're helping produce the joy um, and you're giving us things to enjoy. But how is it from your perspective to see people interact with it? You know, and there's there's obviously the good and then there is the bad. And I don't want to I don't want to dive on, on that sort, sort of stuff. But when you guys are monitoring the community and stuff like that, is it I guess, how is that What from your perspective? How is it to kind of see that community out there and like just doing their own thing? Like we, we created this podcast you know, because of Halo and, and uh, the yeah. merchandise, right, that we love. And we you didn't ask us to do that. We just did it on our own because we we yeah. enjoy it. So just interested to hear, like, your perspective or, or I don't know if there's a larger perspective from 343 on that community aspect. I think it's I think it's shared, and I can't tell you how unbelievably gratifying it is when you see, um, when you see people loving something that you've poured, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into. And look, I can tell you, I'd love to tell you that what we do in, in this world that I live in called consumer products is the hardest, but like, dear God, the people who are making our core engine, which are the games, I mean, they are pouring themselves into it and they're, right. you know, and do we make mistakes? Certainly on my team, I make mistakes all the time. I'm not going to speak for my team because they're generally, I'm the one who leads people astray with my crazy ideas. <laughs> um, but like, are we perfect? No, but like when you see people love things that you've helped create or bring to life, it just lights you up. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and ultimately, you know, it is about, we want to have, uh, we want our community happy, meaning our existing mm -hmm. community. And then we want more. We want, we yeah. want you guys to feel so great yeah, about it that you're bringing more people in. We want new people right. getting involved. And so it really does like it lights you up. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, you have, you've had these people that have loved, and I think, um, Again, I don't want to dwell on a negative negativity, but people love the franchise, and so when things don't go the way that they expect, then that's one thing. Then they kind of, you know, they react a different way, and um, it's it's coming from a, a point of passion, right? So, oh, totally. um, 
So it's, people, it's got to be, you gotta, I'm yes. sure you have to spin it that way when you're receiving that uh, criticisms. It can, it can be hard, um, but we also got to listen. I think there's a lot of uh, open-mindedness. Uh, people listen. And then also sometimes you have to make decisions. And not everybody's going to love every decision you make. But um, generally speaking, uh, you know, we try and be as thoughtful as we can and make the best decisions we can and then listen and learn. Right. Yeah. I, I think I think that's one of the more um, meaningful things is, is that you all are listening. Because I've obviously I've, I've seen both sides of the community. I've, I've seen a lot of negativity. I've seen a lot of positivity. I've seen a lot of people um, asking questions and, and seeing you all. With, like with with all these new products, all the you know even the style of these new products, it shows that you're actually, you know, you're listening to the community and you're taking their input seriously. And I think that means yeah. a lot more to to people, probably more than anything else does. Just that they're being heard and what what they say about yep. a franchise that they like so much actually uh, mm -hmm. that it matters. It takes a lot of energy to to give negative feedback. So frankly, I I take it super positively, in the yeah. sense that. If, if somebody feels that strongly about something that we did or didn't do right, um, then ultimately that's coming from a, a place of passion, which is great. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes, you know, it's hard to hear. <laughs> Maybe it's yeah. not always expressed the way you want it. But I mean, mm, I, yeah. like, I, mean yeah. I can tell you goofy stuff. Like, I mean, we're, we're always working on, you know, or I hear back, especially fans outside the U.S., um, Sometimes we don't have enough of our products on shelf in the right kind of places. And they're like, "Hey, why why did why do they get this? But I haven't even seen you know the the second series of these figures yet, or whatever." Um, we're not trying to not do that. Sometimes right. just the reality of where we're getting picked up in certain things, or you know, shipping yeah. issues. Every now and then, we're yeah. doing our you know, we're working to try and make sure that we can offer uh, fans products directly. Right. Have we solved? Have we solved for shipping perfectly? No. <laughs> Are we working on it? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And along the way, sometimes we screw stuff up. I think it says a lot that you're willing to have those kind of com like candid conversations about that, though, because I know um, with a lot of the other franchises that I collect, I don't want to narrow it down to one because I don't want to give that example <laughs> <laughs> in case they're listening as well. Um, but. No, with like a lot of the other things that I collect there isn't that conversation there so it's quite frustrating but I found that with you guys you're just quite open and transparent about that and then that's the same with like the guys at Jazzwares, the guys at Mega it feels like everyone around these products cares so much about them that they're willing to go out and have those conversations and I feel like with a lot of consumer products you don't get that so it's nice to have that transparency yeah it's a it's a real blessing as an organization that we get to be so deeply embedded with uh, uh you know in some big entertainment companies the consumer products groups are often quite separate from the creative process yes yeah. and, the, and the fact that we get to be sort of embedded with and really deeply al allied with or aligned with i think makes a difference and frankly that's a lot of why i wanted to be in games and gaming because um like, do I want to do well and show off big numbers and show that we're like in lots of countries and stuff? Sure. Like from a career point of view, yeah, of yeah. course. But what, but, but what lights me up is actually what you asked about before. When somebody cares enough about our products to do a podcast about them or to wear them or <laughs> to like or to go somewhere to meet up with other fans, it's unbelievable. And it's like that is so much more valuable. And, and like that is really that's, you know, what we're about. Yeah. or what we want to be about right yeah <laughs> let's, a little bit. let's talk let's talk about your team um yep. and so you've kind of given us your your purview you know your kind of oversight um but let's talk a little bit about um you know what what your other team members do and i think you know we're interested in um obviously you know the guy that, that helps with the mega stuff but then i'm sure then you have a whole team that works on all the different um you know, merchandise that you work on? Is it is it kind of like one person per type of product or kind of how does that work? Uh, we're set up into, uh, there are two ways to think about it. So we, we have uh, three major types of people. 
Yeah. Uh, so there's a team of people that is about the licensing and the partnerships themselves. Okay. So it's responsible for our just our overall business relationships with our partners like mm -hmm. Mattel yep. uh, or Mag Mega. Uh, we have a team of people that's responsible for uh, marketing and community and direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and they're obviously uh, about making sure that we're taking feedback in, but we're also sharing information out. Um, and then there's a team of people who works directly to develop the products with mm -hmm. our partners and that creative team, that's where you have, you know, specialists who work on, uh, mega and other toy lines. Uh, but you also have folks who have more graphic and, you know, fashion design backgrounds who work on apparel and, and, you know, printed goods and yeah. you know, or publishing and stories. So you do, um, we do have a set of people who really specialized by the kind of um, outlet or product that we're aiming for. Yep. Cause you, you gotta know the intricacies of it. You gotta understand if you're working mm -hmm. with a company that's ultimately gonna have to manufacture something, how do you make sure that you get that color correct into a resin for a plastic? Right. That mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. So can you take us through one of those relationships and kind of how that conversation goes? Um, is it, you know, we've had conversations with Mega in the past and they said, well, we, we get the opportunity to go pitch stuff, you know, like we, we get a, we, um, you know, they, they've been working with you for a while, but they're like, we, we came, up, came up with these ideas and then you guys are like, yeah, that's great. Or, well, we can't quite do that one. Um, does it work like that with everybody or kind of what is that back and forth? So I'll give you the, the general example and then, you know, there, there are varieties often. But generally speaking, we'll have an idea that we want to we want to be in a certain space. Mm -hmm. So, I would love to, to talk about construction products, but we've been doing that for over a decade. So, yeah, right, you, you know, that's new. Maybe that's not the the perfect example, but in the you know, um, I don't know. I, I'll make something up. So I got something on my desk. I got a mug. We're like, hey, yeah. you know what? We want to be in um, housewares, mm -hmm. and we want and we know that we have a big game launch company coming. So we know that mass retailers are going to be interested in our property. So then we, we go look for who are the best companies that make those kind of products, who has good retail distribution. We talk to them about what's big about our franchise mm -hmm. and, and why we have an opportunity and what we're looking for with them. Um, and then they present us insights about, hey, here's what's happening in the space. Here's how we would approach it from a design perspective. And then it ends up being an editor process. So in the case sure. of, in the case of Mega, which is more appropriate to the point, our job is to be experts on what's happening in the Halo universe mm -hmm. and where we're going long term. Right. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't have people who understand construction very well because we do. Um, but ultimately, our job is to brief them on what's coming and what do we think? What do we think the big, you know, either story beats or thematic changes are or mm -hmm. marketing moments or whatever. They tell us what's happening in the toy industry, what their manu new manufacturing capabilities are, what they're seeing in terms of what they're hearing in terms of fan feedback too. Um, and then they will present to us, uh, you know, we'll, we'll present thematically where we would like to go and they'll come back and present to us product ideas. And we'll, we'll kind of, we'll iterate on those together mm -hmm. to come up with a new product line. Can you give us any insight on, on um, just for example, cause we know Nerf is new. Yes. Like, did, was had that one been worked on for a long time? Because you were working with Boomco, I believe, before in a similar space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or did, did all of a sudden did Nerf say, yeah, well, the new game's coming out, so we know that that it's gonna, you know, it's a good time to to partner. Yeah, um, can you give us any insight on that? I mean, lead times in our world tend to be pretty long, so we had been working yeah. on that. I think in, gosh, 2018, 2019, we started looking forward wow. towards the next wave of Halo. Yeah. And saying, hey, we're going to have some big blockbuster moments here. And, you know, what are the natural spaces that we want to be in that are that are right for our universe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, I mean, I, frankly, Nerf play is A, awesome and fun. Yeah. B, like, perfectly aligns with a lot of what you do. And, and like, right. it, it actually, you could literally bring elements of Halo to life in the real world. Mm hmm. We know we've heard our fans, they love it, you know, cause we've done, we did some limited stuff before. And so that's the case where we went to Nerf and said, hey, 
there's a real opportunity here. <laughs> yeah, right. gaming's huge. Big. Halo's huge. You've got a great, you've got a great business. We want to be a part of it, and so we've mm -hmm. been working on that one for a couple of years before yeah. it all started coming out. Where you guys started to see it and, and get a chance to bring it home. That's cool. Yeah, it's nerf for and nothing. And then, I mean, is it a big relief? Or I guess, how was that feeling when you finally see people buying it or on shelf and things like that? Like, because you've been working on it for a while, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it's scary sometimes. It's uh, in that case you kind of know it's going to work because it's just too well, awesome to not work. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> but then you also want to be successful and, and be a priority because they're also doing lots of other big things. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. like I can tell you when that one came out, I think um, our initial pre-order was, I won't give you the exact specifics, but it was certainly one of their top pre-orders they've ever done. Oh, uh, wow. You know, when we first, wow. you know, when we first announced. Um, so like we're they thrilled. Are. Yeah, yes. they're May 40. Yeah. 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 I run around so, my house yeah. with that thing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shooting the dog. Um, right. Yeah. And that's a case where again, like we're lucky. We have people like you who will let us know what you're hearing and also what you see or what you want. Mm -hmm. Those those toy companies, for example, we're talking about Hasbro and Mega, they have designers who love games, who love gaming, who play a ton of games. They'll be like, here's what we want to do, or here's what we're capable of now. We can do these teeny tiny things, or we can do these massive things, or we can do specialized things. And, you know, e-commerce grows, that allows us to do more specialized things or higher priced items that might not sit at your traditional sort right. of big box retailer. So they give us a ton of ideas. And then we get to go off and riff on it with our internal teams too. So it always ends up being, you know, there's always a bunch of different, mm -hmm. you know, sort of inputs flowing into these processes. Was the um, was the Moa Burger Pringles <laughs> part of your oversight? Here it comes. No, not direct, not directly. But that it's, felt uh, like marketing. It's uh, so we have a we have a partnerships team who okay. works with uh, who works with companies. But uh, yeah, keep an eye out. Um, let's see, next Tuesday. I know this will be broadcast later, but since yeah. we're since we're filming this, keep an eye out next Tuesday. We're gonna we're gonna celebrate it a little bit on our own. Oh, cool. Okay, I like it. I, I'm not nice. even kidding. My dad text. He woke me up this morning with a text <laughs> saying, "Hey, did you know Halo is making Pringles?" And I was like, "Yeah, they're 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 Moa Pringles." And he was like, yeah. "What? What is a Moa burger?" And I was like, "Dad, <laughs> we'll talk about it when you're older. It's all right. Just it's well, all right. here's the thing. Like, I, the concept is amazing, but like, Mo, it's like these little threads, right? Like, you know, Mo, a Moa burger could be somebody's onboard on ramp." to the Halo universe, right? Like yeah, they could figure really out what good. they could look, they could start a Google search and then just go down that rabbit hole, right? And, I think um, I might start enough for podcast, you know? <laughs> I like it. All right, um, let us talk. Oh, um, another thing I'm interested in, it's kind of along these lines, is how closely do you work with 343 leadership? Um, so like, does Bonnie need to approve all this stuff? Or, you know, are you working with Frank here and there? Um, how, how does that how does that work? Uh, so, uh, very closely. Not so. Short answer: We work incredibly closely with the leadership team, but also with like on a detailed basis with the game team. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, like every Monday afternoon, uh, folks from our product development team will meet with the franchise team, which is Frank's team. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and representatives from the different game teams, creatives and producers, mm -hmm. to review. Uh, we actually just went walked through with them the concepts for the fall 2022 mega line. Right. Yeah. Uh, which I'm which I'm not to talking to you about today. <laughs> um, they do like, exist. It's all right. It's all right. They're, so, they're a thought. <laughs> so on a weekly basis, we're engaging with with people from you know from artists to art directors, mm -hmm. to producers, to franchise, you know, sort of franchise team. Um, my boss is Kiki, uh, Kiki oh, okay. Wolfkill. She's yeah. responsible for all of transmedia. So she's always in the loop. Um, you know, I'd love to tell you that Bonnie looks at every individual product and she does, you know, on a, usually on a quarterly basis, we'll go through a big review where we'll show her everything that's cooking. Mm -hmm. um, she also has some bigger fish to fry, like, sure. you know, and, and frankly, I'd like to say, you know, as I, pat my, you know, yeah, should, that's, yeah. me, that's me patting my team on the back. But, um, you know, we've been doing good work for a while. And, yeah, and yeah. so we have a good amount of freedom to just go, go do things. And then, 
within broad parameters. We're not going to go make something crazy up uh, and go into a whole new space without mentioning mm -hmm. it to. Her. I don't yeah. know. We're not. Gonna, I'm trying to think of something crazy. We're not going to start, you know, selling, you know, halo cactuses and start a whole and invest in a giant yeah. farm. Yeah. Right. Without talking to Bonnie about it, but broadly speaking, if we're, you know, if we're going from t I don't know. Sorry. I use ridiculous <laughs> examples just to make the point. It's just my thing. Um, but you know, if we're going to go from you know t-shirts to button-down shirts, this is another goofy example, and I'm not yeah. promising that, by the way. Uh, nor should nor should I. Right. But everything literally. But that's the, that's the case where we just go do it. And along yeah. the way, you know, obviously we'd be reviewing it with other folks. And then, you know, once a quarter or so, we'd give her a sense of, hey, we're going to look at expanding over here because we want to be involved in this geography or this particular market. Has there – I'm going to ask one more follow-up question, and then I'll, I'll finally let the other guys talk. <laughs> Has there been a case where they've they've suggested something or they've, they've had an idea, like, I really want you to go pursue this, um, that – you like, I don't know, not necessarily a certain sense of urgency, but like you, you did look into and you made happen, or is it usually, you know, you're presenting stuff up to, or, you know, not necessarily presented up because you said you have a sense of freedom, but is it normally just you're pursuing the things that make sense, show them, they're like, yeah, that's cool, and then move on? Some of both. Yeah. I'm trying to think of examples, but it happens often. I mean, we'll get sure. great ideas from, you know, Frank will ping something that he sees <laughs> on the internet. Uh, somebody on the game team will be like, hey, I love this thing um, or I like this kind of gaming or what like it's it, it we have we have a broad strategy, but we all are always trying to take input. But you're collaborating internally. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's 100 cool. percent. But that. honestly, that's what, like game development is a team sport. Like there's mm -hmm. nothing happens in this world without a lot of people, you know, chipping in. Yep. And that includes sense. our stuff, too. Cool. Well, um, I've been talking a lot. Gabe, do you want to ask a, a question at all? Is something yeah. burning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do have a thought before we continue about, um, you know, certain products. Is there any is there any one, obviously, that has been released um, that posed a specific challenge like that that was actually it was it was really hard to work on to get it to a spot where the team actually was like yeah we're happy with this let's release it is there anything like that uh whew. i mean there are a lot of things like that i mean the yeah, reality uh, is yeah. we, um we may not get everything perfect but we have really high standards and we're always trying to yeah. push ourselves and push our partners and get feedback from other groups internally um so mm -hmm. we're really hands-on with all our products. Um, I tell you, it's especially when we're getting into a new space where th where things get hard. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like examples, I was thinking of this morning. Uh, you know, we had a we had a loot crate subscription service for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and there are elements of that. There are elements of that that I loved. Um, mm -hmm. But it but it was hard because it's like okay how are we going to make sure we have enough content to do six yeah. of these over the course of a year and yeah. and do we feel good about the individual providers who are coming on to make the individual components um, the um, I can tell you and I, I I know I met two of the three of you specifically at these events but um, when we worked on Outpost Discovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was brutally hard because we were literally trying to bring the universe to life. Yeah, and, I, I remember talking and with Tyler. Like, and it's he, not easy. He said it's tough. Yeah, yeah, and and all for good reasons. It's because we all care a lot. We want to make sure we're doing things right and good. But when you're getting mm -hmm. into a new space and you're working with a new partner and and you have to understand um, all of the requirements, like it can mm -hmm. be challenging. And so you get into new business lines. It's usually a lot harder. Yeah. Yeah, that makes right. sense. Because the dollars and cents have to make sense at the end of the day too. You know, like it's a, it can be a cool concept, um, like the loot crate thing. You know, I signed up for that thing right away. And um, but then it's like, yeah, like you all, you also have to push up meaningful content that people are going to want to continue to yeah. add to their collections, yeah. right? Yeah. Not just you know something that oh it just says Halo on it. You, you should like that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you know, and we've probably done that sometimes, but we try really hard not to. Yeah, like we want. Yeah. We want any product to have a real reason to exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tom, do you have anything? Uh, it, it might be a bit of a hard one to answer, but I'm kind of interested because I know there's been um, a lot of stuff, especially this past year with 
kind of more unique things like jewellery, for example, that we would never usually see. So I, I wondered if there's been any like really unique partnership that stands out in your mind as something that you're really glad that you got the opportunity to do. Oof. Always hitting them with the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> I am really, I am particularly proud of and excited about the things that we are, the, the limited volume, um, we, we call them collabs internally. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, right. You know, where we're working with a really specialist partner and trying to bring out a really narrow focus thing that is surprising and interesting okay. to fans. And a lot of times we try not specifically like we don't want to do this in massive volume because we want it to be special and limited. Mm -hmm. um, so I love, um, you know, some of, some of the things we did last year. I know that we did uh, we did a super limited program. I think it was 117 shirts with Billionaire's Boys Billionaire yeah. Boys oh my Club. Gosh. Um, mm. And uh, and James Monismith on my team showed me a tweet the other day of somebody who had framed the shirt and put it on his wall and just how yeah. prou how proud how proud he was to have because again there's not a lot of those in the world mm -hmm. um, so I really love that because part of what we want to do is we want to like part one of our goals actually is we want to surprise you meaning you all you three yeah. and anybody who's watching this yeah we want to surprise you with the interesting places where we can take the brand and either elevate it or surprise you or do something a little bit different. It's still gotta be right. Like it can't, like we don't wanna do, we don't wanna go too crazy, uh, but I'm really proud of the thinking that's going into expanding in that direction. Cool. Um, so I'm super proud of that, but I'm also proud, like honestly, just some of the day-to-day -day stuff, Tom, I know we've chatted about this before in different formats and different social media, but we've done a crazy lot of work to make sure that we are on, um, on shelf yeah mm -hmm. at as broadly as possible um, yeah because in between games frankly we we hadn't been on shelf as broadly as we wanted to be in some markets and so right, like right. one of the things i'm super proud of the energy sword that we did with mega at target yeah mm -hmm. um yeah. awesome product yep. collector focused meaning yeah. it's like hey kids mm -hmm. can love it but that's targeted at people who are willing to spend a little bit more money, spend mm -hmm. a little bit more time. It's not the easiest build, premium right. packaging, yeah. premium product. And you do all those things right. And guess what? Uh, the One of the toy buyers at Target, it's like, that's like a toy of the year for 2020. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They loved it. They did incredibly well with it. And now that opens the door for us to do more things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. You guys, you guys will have to speculate. I'm not going to tell you what's coming next. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> <right there. laughs> but like, I'm so I'm super proud of. Hey, we can do super limited stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm also incredibly proud of the work that we've done. Like the the basic hard work we've done with yeah. Mega and their teams and all our teams to make sure we are like much more broader, broader and more accessible in the world. Yeah. And that's not just about making sure we have lots of stuff out there. Sometimes it's about making sure we have great stuff out there that just kicks ass. And that energy sword, I think, is a perfect example of all of that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah, and I absolutely. Love... Oh, go ahead, Tom. You... I, I just, I can't describe to you that feeling of like seeing stuff popping up on Amazon here in the UK yes. again. Like being able to just order stuff. Or a, a good example for me, one of my Jurassic friends... Um, he buys through the Mattel portal because he's got a Jurassic toy shop that sells loads of dinosaur figures. Um, and he said to me, oh, I, I don't know if you know, but Halo's popping up again. I'm going to be stocking it. And at that moment, I was just like, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. trying not to lose it with excitement. So right. uh, it's really awesome yeah. seeing all of that kind of coming yeah. to fruition now. Yeah, well, I love Colin, seeing you were asking before about yeah. uh, how do we, how do we do how do we develop products? Yeah. I can tell you in some cases, like the Pelican, that was something where the where the designers at Mega watched the the first trailer mm -hmm. um, on Infinite and were just so inspired by everything that they saw. Yeah, where they're like, we got to do this. And then as they got into it, part of what they educated us on, frankly, is that people is that like for bigger sets. Fans want to build them, but they also want to be able to display them. 
and they want to be able to display them in multiple ways, which again, I should be sensitive to, but I wasn't, we weren't necessarily thinking about it there. Yeah. And so like, hey, we can do this a way, we can build this in a way so that it is fantastic and beautiful to build. Big scale, tells a story with the characters that are in it, but also by the way, you can use it as a playset if you're a little bit younger. Yeah. Or because it can open up the way it does, it also creates a ton of different ways where you can display it, post it, stream about it, whatever. Yeah. And so that's a case yeah. where the partner, frankly, the partner's coming to us and saying, here's how we want to take this. And honestly, I remember that meeting. We were actually in Montreal when they first present that concept to us. And we were just grinning because we're like, oh, yes, that. like that just brings it to life. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, so that shows when... their partnership, like their expertise. They know yeah. what the audience wants, yeah. mm -hmm. and it sounds like they kind of explained it to you. And you're like, "Yes, that makes total sense, right?" And, and then everybody knew it was going to be a masterpiece. And this thing's amazing. I got it sitting right over here next to me. <laughs> yeah, got it on the shelf. I just remember the one thing I said to you when we got to hang out was, "I want a minifigure of the Pelican pilot." And then I saw it in the Pelican, and I was like, "They did it! Yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> Can you well, talk that... about that a little bit? Um, just because we are, you know, we have many figures and we just, you know, we we talk about that as a part of our sets and the experiences. Um, your team, you know, there's all these characters. It's Halo. It's this deep universe, right? Like, yeah, so yeah. How, how do you have that conversation with not only Mega, but your other like Jazzwares and the other, you know, the action figures side of things? You're like, yeah, you can talk about this character. You know, like uh, Jega is, just came up, right? Um, so, so he he can be he's a, he's an action figure, but we don't have a couple other action figures. Are you a part of those conversations, or is that more like Frank's team and the the you know the Jeff Easterlings of the world? Uh, it's our team that our, it's our team that drives them, and then we obviously involve Jeff and Frank and you know franchise folks. But first, you got to have. Um, I mean, it's not it's not easy. It's not it's a uh, it's a complex you know, right. planning process yeah, to, yeah. it's like, you got to look at, you got to look at a bunch of things. First of all, you got to start with what's our overall roadmap. Mm -hmm. The games are our engine. So what are the big moments in our game? When are characters going to be, if it's a new character, when are they going to be, when are people going to know about them? Or do we want to kind of tease them so people can be excited to learn more about them later? Mm -hmm. um, we have a 20th anniversary coming up. Okay, well, what are yeah. what are like monumental, you know, sort of what are the top characters ever in Halo history? Mm -hmm. um, and then you got to think about it when we're rolling out toy lines and like we've been doing this with Mega forever. I mean, what are there, 15, 20 potentially different figures between the, the micro action figures, the heroes, the figures that come in oh. sets mm -hmm. yeah. per, per season? So you got to have right. a grid to think about, okay, which ones make sense with certain sets? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that over multiple years we're creating, you know, we're creating an opportunity for people to like chase things down or right. create a set or make right. something really right. special in a certain year. And so like, there's a bunch of different, like there's some serious like planning and spreadsheet work, et cetera, mm -hmm. to make sure that you're doing the best you can meeting fans interest not meeting too much of the fans interest because then you want to be able to come back in 2022 with some more stuff I have another one, and right. mm -hmm. you want it to either connect to a moment like a 20th anniversary or a game launch or the 15th mm -hmm. anniversary of one of the one of the games within the series so there's all those things flow into one right yeah yeah that's probably the the fun and frustrating thing right about it is like you want to give the community what they want on certain aspects like more you know yeah. more official characters but you got to hold back a little bit too, you know? So, yeah. Well, and yeah. I, honestly, I love it because like, you know, and we'll do a big, you know, a line review for a, for a, for a major program like mega. And we'll actually, we'll spend time really going through every product in it. And, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm not the expert, you know, Rick, uh, for example, who I know you guys will hopefully talk to in an upcoming, um, session, Rick Hochberger on our team has been yeah. working with Mega for forever. Uh, and there are other folks on our team and Frank's team who know every character inside and out. But I love getting <laughs> a chance to poke and prod on it because I get interested in how do you make sure you're balancing hero characters versus alien characters thematically? Like, are you are you properly representing different eras of Halo fandom? Because we want people to be excited about the newest, but we also want fans who have been around since Halo 3 to maybe find something that they're excited about. Um, and even from a product point of view, 
do we have a right blend of colors, for example? Like you want to make sure that in any one year, you've got different figures with this sort of, you've got distinct color palettes. You can tell characters from each other. We don't want them all to be, you know, we don't want every single figure to look like Master Chief. Not the right. Master Chief's not, yeah. the, not, not the best and the baddest, right? But you want to like, so there's a ton yeah. of different dimensions. It's a blast. Yeah, that's why you throw like the, the red the red figure was was it a Mark Seven in the, this year? Um, so anyway, yeah, yeah, it makes That's sense. Right. So they, they look yeah. good on shelf together as a collection, yeah. as a wave, as we talk about them, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of intricacies. That's, That's cool. That's the exact same logic I use, um, like making custom minifigures. Is uh, I'll take a look at my page, and if I see too much green or too much blue, I'll be like, yeah. okay, I got to do a yellow or an, a red or yeah. something. Like you just have to make sure that it's all blends together, so you have a good variety. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, we only got a couple, a little time left. Why don't we go um, maybe some more fun, higher level stuff? So, can you tell us what is the best selling Halo item of all time? Do you have like a big spreadsheet oh, yeah. with like giant numbers <laughs> that just keep <laughs> racking up? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm checking my notes. I got to make sure I don't mess anything up. Yeah. Um, so the the best selling is easy. There are two there are two ways to cut it. Um, micro action figures. Uh, with Mega, yes. oh. by, by, by volume, by number of products sold. And I'm including Halo Heroes and things like that in there. Yeah. Um, awesome. We've been doing those over a decade. So in terms of mm -hmm. volume, those sure. are yeah. those are our top. And actually, yeah, that's I love it because that's, that's a lot of what differentiates um, our line. Mm -hmm. And it, but it's also it's rooted in the in the it's rooted in what's great for the universe because you do have all the different armors and you do have all the different weapons and you do have all the different aliens. So like, I think that's I think it makes it both makes sense quote unquote strategically, yeah. but mm -hmm. it makes sense. It's like it makes sense heart and mind. I guess. Well, right. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, and talk about we talked about onboarding somebody. I remember you know I I tell a story about I grabbed uh, Sergeant Forge from one of those boxes way back when. Yeah. You know, and it's like I don't want that one. I, I, I like Forge, and this is when I started collecting, and I put him on my my desk at work, and then all of a sudden I grabbed a drop pod, and then you know yeah. I grabbed <laughs> yeah. something else, and yep. you know um, it's like an onboard. They're getting pelicans. Yep. <laughs> and the the other thing I'll say a little bit tongue in cheek, but the. Uh, um, Halo Fall of Reach. So a lot of people don't don't realize that actually we were a book before we were a video game. So yeah, um, yeah, it came out prior so, to the game. So I'm I'm not going to pretend that we're responsible for the game being successful. Um, you know, maybe the game had a little bit to do with creating creating the swim lane for the rest of us. Um, right. But I got to give a shout out to Fall of Reach too. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys Absolutely. have done lots of Reach stuff over the years, you know, um, which has been great. I mean, it, it, it deserves the homage, right, for sure. Yeah. So anything else on top that uh, is worth noting besides the, the micro action figures? Um, uh, we've done a good number of Warthogs. So yeah, I that's true. War yeah. Warthogs, are, Warthogs are always big. But, yeah. no, I mean, like really in terms of like in terms of top sort of volume selling, I think the figures are the things to, to point out. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel incredibly thankful to you all as fans and to all our fans, because um, I could go crazy and listing like, I mean, Master Chief costumes have been consistently been one of the top boys costume yes. in the US yeah. for like are, five are years good? in a row yeah. now. I you know what I mean? Um, over quote unquote, you know, lots of big famous, you know, comic book or theatrical yeah. characters, right? right? So so we got success stories in a ton of different dimensions that I'm super mm -hmm. excited about. Yeah, my uh, my oldest, he was six at the time. Um, he grabbed, he he bought unaided, unaided by dad. He knows I like Halo, but unaided, he bought the <laughs> Mark Seven, the red Spartan for oh, Halloween this year. I was just yeah. like, yes, Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very good. That's good to no, hear. And just in general, I love seeing walking into a store and seeing Halo again. You know, it's just such yeah. a such a cool feeling totally. to know that we're we're out there, we're on, we're on the same shelves that Marvel's on, that Jurassic Park's on. You know all those other I'm big so names. So happy you said Jurassic Park. You know me too I, that well. Was for you. <laughs> that was for you. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So what about what about the other end? Um, what what did you think? Either you thought or you were hopeful for that ended up just mm, didn't do quite so hot. I don't know that I can pick on. It's like, well, okay, which of your children do, are you? Are you? Are you most <laughs> right. upset with at the moment? Yeah. Right. Um, and we've, 
we've mistimed some stuff, which is too yeah. bad. Sure. Um, even like, I mean, we're I like, I've, I'm so thrilled with what we're doing with, uh, with Nerf. Yeah. Um, but I was pretty proud of what we did with uh, Boomco too. And, and actually, I yeah. think one of the reasons, one of the reasons Nerf uh, liked us was they were like, you know what? You guys did something interesting there and that surprised us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, but but unfortunately, from a timing point of view, like some of so a couple of those things that we did at that point in time uh, ended up coming out a little bit after Halo Five. So from a timing point of view, yeah. we didn't really line up the big presence right. with the with the big blockbuster moment. Yeah, um, and that's part right, got to be part of the challenge of the job because, like you said, things take a while, right? And you probably yeah. did your best to get it in place, and just didn't work out, right? Yeah. So you know, there's there's things that uh, there's things that you you miss on or things that you don't time right. Um, yeah. But big picture, there's nothing that there's nothing that stands out. I think I mentioned to you before we started recording. The thing I miss the most is not that this isn't awesome, but I miss seeing you all in person because yeah, that energy yeah. and that ability to have conversations and that ability to hear feedback, even if it's not always the best, live mm -hmm. and in person, it's just radically different. And so. Yeah. The thing that I wish we were doing this summer, you know, is getting out on the road again, like we, you know, we got to a couple of years ago without yeah. those discovery. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, the world heals up, yep. and uh, you know, we get a chance to do things like that again in the future. And there's nothing, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not teasing anything here. There's nothing immediate on yeah. the roadmap. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of. I mean, there's. There's a, there's a game that's got to launch. Like there's a lot of big yeah. things mm -hmm. the studio's taking yeah. on right now. A lot of important, mm -hmm. yeah. But certainly in terms of something I miss, that's something I miss. Yeah. You know, even E3 last year. Right, yeah, yeah. right. But then Our I life. guess in that, I was going to just say in that same vein, I suppose it's exciting because obviously you've got Infinite coming up. You've got the TV show, which will hopefully be, again, another big onboarding point for a lot of new fans. Mm -hmm. So yes. then with all of that stuff, obviously you get new opportunities to explore how you engage them as well. Yes, 100%. I think it's a really exciting, it's a really exciting time. I mean, you look at everything that's coming this year and hopefully yeah. next year. And frankly, I, I like... And I apologize for drinking the Kool Aid and being a little bit of a nerd, but I'm I'm so happy with and excited about where Xbox is going. Yeah, um, I mean, Game Pass is ridiculous. It's such oh, a yeah, it's insane. Um, the fact that we're going to be available there day and date with launch, the fact that we're going to be on PCs, you know, the mm -hmm. fact that there's going to be free to play elements, like we like selfishly, and hopefully you guys feel this too, but the. You know, and I'm going back to my PowerPoint roots here. The addressable audience, like the yeah. number of people that we could potentially get interested in Halo over the next couple of years, it's gonna huge. huge. You yeah. could Which say it's awesome. infinite. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> he uses that on every episode, by the way. It's a little right. bit overused at this point. A little bit. <laughs> So what do you want to, uh, so we're going to wrap, but was there anything you want to leave us with, like what to look out for? Um, I mean, there's stuff on shelves. We talked about Moa Burger stuff. You know, we talked yep. about, um, you know, the Nerf, the, the Nerf partnership. Anything else we should be, um, you know, readying our wallets for um, or, or, you know, keep an eye out for? Uh, Please help. So uh, <laughs> working with Mega Blocks, 20th anniversary set. Yes. Mm -hmm something special which by the yes. time this podcast airs you will have seen the uh the first reveal on we are very yeah. excited about that uh let me see what else do i have i jotted down um uh we dropped a little toymation teaser with wicked cool toys today yes that was so yeah. cool. and i really like what they're doing with their world of halo and uh you know the different sizes yeah. and scales we're getting off there yeah i love um, that scale there's a lot of new toys coming this year, obviously. Uh, we're deep in planning. Frankly, we're already deep in planning for 2022. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about the um, level of passion, commitment, excitement, and investment we're seeing from our partners, which is a direct reflection of the kind of feedback that they're getting from you and also from retailers. And so I think you're going to see us continue to expand in a couple of different dimensions, which I'm like super geeked out about. Yeah. That's wonderful That's to hear. Weird. Yeah. And then there's gonna we're gonna do some crazy high end stuff this year, which is just gonna be like what? what are you? That's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. I there's know, some I things wanna... from uh, there's some things from New from uh, I guess it was New York Toy Fair that I'm I'm dying to see on store shelves. I can't wait to get more Halo yeah. loot. 
Yeah. Well, it's fun so. to see, you know, Xbox, they did the the fridge, right? The Xbox fridge. So it's fun to see that <laughs> you guys pursuing those sorts of fun ideas. So I think that's that's a, yes. that's a good teaser. We might we might be talking to consumer electronics companies. <laughs> I love it. We have okay. refrigerant technologies. <laughs> right. right. Cool. Well, I think we'll wrap for there. We really appreciate your time, John. Um, this is oh, no, fantastic. Yeah, I'm like, uh, we're so thrilled and I'm we're we're lucky to have you all. And I'm so excited that you're geeked out about it because it's it's awesome. And it's a fun time. I actually I, it's really exciting to just like look forward. All the well, stuff's yeah, coming right now. Is, 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 it's the time. So I'm sure you guys yeah. I know we I sense confidence from your team and I know that you guys are excited about it and you know we're excited about it. So we all we all want to get to the to the end of the year. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. A couple more months to go. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> cool. Right. All right. Well seriously, thanks a ton. I really appreciate this uh, opportunity. Like no joke. I mean honestly the you know I feel incredibly lucky to get to do what I do and that's in large part because of you know you all and the passion and energy that you guys bring. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thank you for joining well, us. Yeah, that will do it for our show. Thanks for joining Builds with Blocks. If you like the show, feel free to support Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolved. 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 John, you got to do it. Uh, I don't, I, if, evolved? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So lame. So lame. Can we cut so that? Lame.